Hi everybody, I'm Claudio. Welcome back to my week's episode dedicated to Rocking Lightroom Super Simple. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to reveal you my secrets and tricks about my favorite adjustment, the use of gradients in Lightroom. So they are not called gradient, they are called graduated filters or radial filters. Today especially we are digging inside the graduated filter. It reminds me so much the use of gradients in Photoshop and this is because I'm so excited. So thanks to all of you that are following me and my channel. I hope you will appreciate what I'm going to reveal you. Today is a very strong lesson. It's a very strong tutorial. Follow it because it's totally an unusual way to use the graduated filter. Totally different from the teacher that are using it for landscape. We are facing two dogs. It's not possible to have and use graduated filter because we are going to affect the dogs. But today with my tricks, you will be able to do that also with dogs. So let's go. Sorry, I forgot to show you lead. So like in a magician, Oh, she's so cute. Charlie. Here we go. This is a, a portrait of a Malin that I took in the past on a pier and uh, it was autumn, so not so nice color. You see, we don't see any many colors in this image, but I love it so much to focus on the vanishing point of this picture a lot. And I think it's amazing because it was in backlight, so I can explain you very well how the graduated filter can be useful in your workflow. So let's see what we can do with the graduated filter using some tricks, tips, secrets of my workflow inside the graduated filter that I'm sure many of you don't know. So let's go. This is very exciting because I'm revealing to people what I'm doing in my post-processing, especially in backlight or in landscape or something like that. I'm sure you will like it so much. So let's start. It's amazing also the use of wood on the pier. And as you can see, it's not so easy because we can't make a mask like in Photoshop. So we would like to control, I would like to control the sky without affecting the dog and the, uh, let me say the wood poles in the background and so on. But I really love the vanishing point of this photo. I took this photo with uh, 40 millimeters, 2.8, 1000 in a second and ISO 250. It's really well focused, so it's amazing for this kind of lens, 40 millimeters. I was so close to the nose of the dog, it's amazing. So let's start. So we will switch to the develop panel of Lightroom and we can start the post-processing. I want to switch immediately to the graduated filter. I just add a bit of exposure, so something really that can affect the whole image, something like that. And I switch immediately from the basic menu to the graduated filter. They are here. It's, the graduated filters are part of gradients. I love gradients, especially in Photoshop. So I love gradients as well here. And they are called graduated filter or radial filter. Today, we are going to talk about the graduated filter. Stay tuned because it's the only way to understand what I'm going to do. It's really easy if you followed it completely, but it could be very difficult if you jump with the, let me say, because you think you don't have time, but I'm assu I assure you that this is a very good time. It works a lot. So let, it's not a waste of, of time. Let's go. Uh, first of all, I want to add the graduated filter. So I click in it on his button and I want to explain you how the graduated filter works. Um, usually it useful for picture where you can discriminate two parts of the picture. For example, the background here, the sky and so on. It's quite, it seems that nothing is visible. You know, you see? And uh, another part that is the pier, the wood pier. So, and we, obviously, obviously we have also the dog, the subject, the main subject of the picture. I love dogs so much. This is very good for 
working with dogs, to edit dogs, but not only. For dogs, it's very difficult to apply the other tutorial about the graduated filter because usually they apply it with landscapes and so on. We are playing, facing to a difficult picture where we have the dog exactly in the center, but we want to use the graduated filter because they are very easy and powerful. It's very simple to use them. It's a very simple way to reach amazing results. So let's see how I want to manage the picture. First of all, in my mind, I divide the picture in the photo in two parts. The first part is the top, the second part is the bottom, okay? Then in this way, first, the first thing I want to be sure of is that it's straightened. So I want to be sure to work on a straightened picture, okay? And I don't cut the picture. This is the original frame. This is the ace double O C photo. So it's straight out of the camera, okay? So many people want to see the before. This is the before. Let's go. Uh, it's quite funny because many people ask me what I do, but I can suggest you that you have just to follow the tutorial and you will discover exactly what I do. It's very important to understand what I'm going to do now. It's really, it could be really complicated if you jump. You need to follow, okay? Let's go. Uh, add the gradual, uh, the graduated filter. I want the mask to be visible so you can see exactly where I'm working. So I start to apply it in the first part of the picture, the upper part of the picture, and I want to work on the shadows and on the brightest part to discriminate the clouds from the sky. So first of all, I want to work on the, let me say, the shadows of the sky. So how to do that? You just have to point in a part of your image and drag and drop the mouse in the direction you want to apply the mask. In this case, I will go from, I will start from here to here. And the first line in the top is where the graduated filter, the adjustment is 100% and the lower part where I'm going to drag and drop and release is the part where it's not affecting anything, my adjustment. Between this 100% and 0%, there is the transition. If I make it bigger, I make bigger the transition. If I make it smaller, it's a very hard transition. In this case, I want to do something like that, okay? It's very well visible. As you can see, I'm affecting also the ears of the dog, and the wood poles in the background, the eyes and everything. It's not so good. So if people try to use the graduated filter as any teacher teach and suggest to use in your photos because it's a landscape, it's not working here. So the main thing to understand is how it works with a dog. So remove the selected mask overlay because I want to see what I'm affecting and because I want it to affect the shadow, I start with removing a bit of temperature, maybe minus three is enough. I want to remove also the exposure. So removing one or something like that of exposure could be nice, not so much, minus one, it could be good. Then I want to add a bit of contrast. So how much? You will see because this is what I do quite all of the time. Yes, the value can change a bit, but 24, 26 is good. Then, because I want to work on the shadow, I go down, I downrise the shadows. How much? A lot. Something like minus 50 or a kind of. And the blacks too. So, going down with the blacks too. You see, the sky is going to be darker. And then, what I go, what I'm uh, going to do now, that is the main part, is to change the dehaze. The dehaze is uh, removing hazy, haze, like the fog, you know? So how much? Not so much, I suggest 20, 27, something like that, okay? Don't judge the result now, it's only the first part. But as you can see, I did a disaster, I did a mess on the dog and on the wood pole too. Look the mask. As you can see, I'm affecting everything. I did a disaster. And usually, in this moment, people quit.
because they don't want to go on with this adjustment. But look what we can do. We can go at the end of this graduated filter. Down here in the bottom, there is range mask. Click it on, on color or luminance. I want to work on the luminance, okay? And let's see how it works. I want the show, I want to show, to explain very well what is happening on the mask. So I decided to work with a range mask called luminance. So I want to discriminate the mask based on the luminance in the picture. So I click the eyedrop, click the eyedrop, and I want to click where? I want to click the shadows of the picture. So probably I want to click here. Let's try. So I click twice in this point and look what's happened here. This is the range. So now I'm affecting all the luminance between zero to 100. So from blacks to whites with a 50 of smoothness. In this case, I want to click here twice just to affect a smaller part. As you can see, I reduced the mask a bit. You can see it better here. I can do it again. Look, back. I was in this situation, so affecting everything, and I click it twice here. And as you can see, Lightroom is doing a selection. It's doing a mask inside Lightroom, inside my graduated filter. This is amazing. And it's skipping. In this case, the range between 47 to 100. But because I want to get the shadow, I want to go down a bit to 30, 31, could be nice to have a better transition because if you exaggerate, it's too visible, the mask. So I will come back to 30, 31, it was good. It's, it, seemed to, it, it seemed to be good, so I will use it. And then I will proceed removing the luminance mask and see what is happening now. I'm not affecting the dog so much anymore, but because probably some parts of the ears are selected, I will continue. I, I'm, I'm going to go on and ahead with the same regulation. I'm inside the graduated filter. I've decided to apply a luminosity mask from 31 to 100 of lights, okay, of shades. And then inside that, I click brush. What is, this br what is it brush? Brush is inside the graduated filter. I want to remove those parts the camera row wasn't able to, let me say, delete from the mask. I will do it by myself. So I have a brush with the plus inside the circle. If you click, uh, if you use the stroke A alt, so hold it on you will see the minus inside the circle. It means that you are removing some parts from the selection. And I make it bigger and I paint. I paint inside. Look, to be sure I'm not affecting the dog inside the graduated filter. I make it smaller a bit because it's too big, because I want to go here too, removing it completely from my mask in this way and here too. As you can see, I am trying to avoid the selection on the dog. You can make it better, but I think, and you will see that this is enough. Without doing amazing and difficult thing, we make it smaller a bit. It's really enough. It's enough to reach an amazing selection. In this case, what is happening? Simply, we use it, a graduated filter from here to here. Then, because I was selecting too many things and I wanted only the shadow of the sky, I decided to switch to the range mask called luminance. Then I click it twice with the eyedrop here in the shadow of the sky, affecting only the shadows and not everything. And then, I decided to remove it, especially from the dog, because I don't want to affect the dog in any parts, okay? So I don't want any problem on the dog. And this is the dog. I can 
uh, let me say, switch off the selected mask overlay and you can see exactly what I'm doing on the sky. This is amazing. Then it's done about the shadow, but because it's not finished, I want to work again with a graduated filter. Now you should know how it works, but not enough because the secret is going to happen now. We can switch again, not from, for, sorry, from the shadow to the highlight. Usually in the sky we have the clouds. It's quite amazing. I'm not adding anything. It's just the reality, but it's not enough. The camera is not able to keep a so much wide exposure, a so much wide dynamic range. This is the reason, because the sky seemed so white. Because or you give the exposure on the dog or on the background. This is because it's totally different to work with dogs. And people that are working with the landscape, it's so easy compared to dogs. So let's see how it con uh, I can continue on this image. So you now know how I work on the sky in the shadows. Now I want to work on the white parts of the sky to improve them. So I will give you another tip. So again, click again on graduated filter and I drag and drop from here 100% to here. So I want a mask like this, look. So you should see the mask I've just done. I don't want to rotate it, so I want it straight, something like that, and I remove, okay? This is the mask, I can show you the mask I'm applying in this moment. Here is, from here to here is 100%, then drag and dropping to zero. So from 100 to zero, this is the gradient we are having. So this is affecting 100%. This is the 100% of the adjustment I'm going to do. And as you can see again, I'm affecting the dog, but this time I want to affect only the white part of the picture. In which way? Look, I switch it off and I want to adjust. What? I want to remove a bit of exp uh, exp sorry, the temperature because I want the sky to be blue. Not so much blue, but something like minus three, for I like it so much. It's really natural. I want everything to be natural. I don't want something like too much blue. We can stay and we can adjust it later with something less, okay? Then, uh, about the exposure, I want to add a bit of exposure. It was already on, I don't know why. Probably the last time I used it, it was on. So plus 0.21. 0.16, 0.18, it's something like that, okay? It, you, can, you can move it whenever you want, but something 0.20 is okay. Then the contrast again, I want to add contrast in the white part of the sky and the highlights. Now it's time to apprise the highlights, but only the highlights. Now I'm affecting everything and the white too, because I'm working on the brightest part of the image. 20 is good. Then, because, oh, maybe it's also 30. That's gonna make it really strong. Don't exaggerate because we are going to clip a bit the image. Something like that could be enough. Okay, it's quite the limit. And then, magician with the DAs, let's start and go to 30. Now, because the blue is too much, i going down to three. But I told you, I'm working on the whites, not on the clouds. So now it's time to select only the white parts of the sky. So again, you should know that. Let's switch to luminance and high drop. And I want to click here. I want to show you what is happening again. So show luminosity, luminance mask and click twice here. And this is what I, we are going to do. A mask is perfect. We did a mask around the dog and we didn't do anything we are not in photoshop and it seems we are in so it's amazing the way to use lightroom let me say trickly yes quite smartly no smartly no trickly yes because it's a way to combine many different features together that people usually don't do in this case i want to adjust just the luminosity that is 61 but it's okay 61 could be nice so don't touch it I click again on the eye drop and I remove the luminance mask. I don't need it anymore. Now I'm working only on the whites. 
and it's amazing because I'm not sure that the dog is yes the dog shouldn't be affected so it's perfect is my mask it's oh, wow look at the sky and we did only the sky in this moment and it's so amazing you can see before and after look before after about the sky before after it's incredible what we have just done on a dog without using photoshop without doing doing any kind of mask okay now because i told you i love so much the vanity uh, vanishes point vanish, van sorry for my english vanishing point uh, of the wood pier and i love it so much i love the details i love the pattern inside i love the screws too so let's go to see how improve them how to explore them it's in the picture and we want it okay we want it nice so in the same way we can adjust the lower part of the picture but this time i will use another trick totally different from before so again i want to click on the graduated filter i want it i want to start from the darkest part of the pier the wood and uh, uh, I will start from here, drag and drop to the mask to here. It could be enough. You can see exactly the mask I'm applying. So in this way, so I'm affecting, maybe we can go on a bit more. Okay, in this case, I'm affecting everything again, the nose. So people want to stop and, I, and want to quick this method, be, but it's amazing. They start to paint with the brush. It's so complicated. Use only the graduated field. It's so easy. I want you to use the simple, simple, the super simple ways to use Lightroom and to do and to achieve amazing results. Let's see what happened now. I want to affect the darkest part of the picture in which way? Simply again, I want to let me say add a bit of contrast, not exposure, a bit of contrast 20, 21, 22 is okay. I want to apply the shadow, I want to make it brighter a bit 19, 17, 18, it's okay, it's not a big problem. Then the blacks, I want to add a bit of contrast like a cure, so I'm apprising the shadow and downlifting the blacks to create something like that more contrast in the picture and this is a trick again i want to add clarity 100 percent look it's so wet it seems wet okay this is very very nice i like it so much but i'm affecting everything so the nose the dog the white part is not my intent but I want to remove a bit of saturation because, because I would like to affect only the shadows and a bit more, only the shadows and let me say the brown parts of the wood, I will create a mask because now I'm affecting everything in the bottom part of the image. So range mask again, but not luminance. I want to play with color. So it's the first time I want to show you how the color works. So I'm going to make an automatic mask with based, let me say, on colors and not, and not on luminance like before. So you can learn how to use the graduated filter in this way. We are, I want to remind you, we are in the graduated filter. So click the eye drop and let's go and I click what? The brown part of the image. Which part? For example, this. Look, without the mask. I want to select this kind of color like here, you know, here, look, with the mask, I want to affect this part, okay, so I'm affecting only the darkest part of the image that are brown, that are brown, like the point I selected, you can select many points, clicking shift, so with the stroke a shift, holding it down, hold it in, holding it down, and clicking other point. You can add five eye drops on your picture. One is enough for me. So what I'm going to do now, I want to click again the eye drop so I don't need it anymore. And what I want to do is to adjust a bit the mask, changing 
the amount. If I go to 100, I'm selecting everything, so the mask is not affecting everything. If I go to zero, there is no tolerance. 50 is in the middle. I go down a bit because I want to be more selective of my colors using 40 or 41. 41 is okay. Then, it's done. But again, I don't want to affect the dog. So, do you remember? I click brush, even if I'm inside the graduated filter, I click alt, so hold down, hold, and remove it from the dog. So remove it totally from the nose of the dog. I don't want to affect the dog because this kind of dog is brown. So if I don't do that, the risk is to affect the wall full of the dog. So I also for the, the pose, I really pay a lot of attention on the pose of the dog. I want it natural, I want it amazing. So removing, 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 and also in the other pose. So just click in and hold the keystroke hold in this way. So I'm not affecting the pose, the legs, and the body of, the, of my dog. I make my uh, brush a bit bigger, and I proceed here, removing it totally from the nose of the dog to be sure that is not affected. Just a bit here more because I don't want to change the white of the dog in this way. Look, it's really, really amazing. The mask is really amazing. We don't need to see the selected mask overlay anymore. So I click it and you can see now that I'm affecting only the darkest part of the image. I can make it warmer, but I don't need it and I don't want it. I quite want to desaturate it a bit because it's quite green. So maybe we can add a bit of magenta, just a bit, and reducing the saturation in this way. I love it really a lot. So we can stop here, okay? And we can proceed, like for the sky, on the white part in the wood. So let's gonna click done and again graduate it filter again. So from where to where I would start from here in the middle and I will go to I don't know maybe here okay something like that not too much. I want to show you the mask I'm using in this moment. It's amazing. I want to rotate it a bit. I want to be sure that it's straight. And okay, in this way. Now, again, I'm affecting with my mask the nose and the legs. Please follow, it's quite finished. It's very easy. I'm doing all the same things in the same part of the picture. So for the upper part, shadow and light, and from the, for the bottom part, the shadow and the light, just separating the adjustment. So for the light, what I want to do, simply I want to, look, switch off the mask. I want to add a bit of exposure. How much? Let's see, maybe something like, a lot, way. I want, I want light. And I want to work on the highlights and on the whites. So make it then stronger, something like 32, 30, 30 could be enough. So I want the white, I want the luminance around the dog. And then, because it's, it's mandatory to use the dehades, I want to dehades a bit from the brownie parts of the image. So something like that, I don't know. It's some, you can try, but 16 could be en uh, enough. But because doing that, I'm going to ruin a bit the image and it's not my intent. Maybe this time I want to go down to make it softer, something like, this. Minus to make it softer, but I add clarity. You remember clarity? Clarity is giving so bright effect like the water. So making the wood wet. So in this case, 17, 19. But because I'm affecting everything, as you can see, I want to reduce the mask only to the brightest part of the image, of the pier. So let's go. Range mask on and work on the luminance. And I want to click only with the eye drop a, a brighter part of the image, like here, for example. Why not? Let's try to see what happened. Okay, in this way, 
I selected a part of the picture. I would like to drag and drop to 100%. So I want to keep the whites and maybe starting from, you can see, I can start from nothing and making the selected part smaller look. It's more visible in this way. You can see exactly what I'm taking, what I'm keeping. So maybe something like just the white, quite the white. I want to work only on the white. As you can see the pink parts of the picture. 66, 67, something like that. Okay, something like that is okay. Now, we don't need the eye drop anymore and we don't, see, we don't need to see the luminance mask anymore. So this is the picture transformed by me with four graduated filter, okay? Uh, two in the skies, one for the shadow, one for the white, using the trick of the luminance mask and the trick of brushes removing the part that you want you don't want to affect and the same thing for the bottom part but we work it on the wood so we selected the the mask with the graduated filter removing it from the nose obviously obviously with a brush clicking alt and we didn't use the luminance but we use it the other way so the color mask okay in this case we can click done what we have to do oh you didn't tell me anything, but we forgot a thing, which was, was dedicated to the brightest part. We can select and see which was the mask. This was the mask dedicated to the, let me say, the whitest part of the image. No, this is the, uh, the wood. So this is the shadows. So probably is this one? No, probably is this one. Yes. In this mask, this is the mask we need to work on or is this one? Let me see. So this is the sky and this is the... Yeah! Uh, I've just found it. Simply I forgot to remove it from the nose. So I will click brush and remove it from the nose. But because... Yes, I'm gonna remove it. But because it's not so bad to... Let me say highlight the nose a bit. I will remove it only from the nose in the center. So something like this, Alt, just from here. I want the nose to be really, really black, but the rest is okay. I want to affect it. Okay, remove the mask and it's done. So I can show you the before and after. Before and after. And because it's not finished yet, I want to just add a tip on the eye. So I just to work the eyes, want to work the eyes, showing you a very easy way to do that. We did it in the last lesson, so I will proceed very fast. So we have just to click here. So we have the, the brush. I want to make it smaller a bit. We have fit something in the middle, something like that. And I will do it fast here. So I want to do something really fast here and here. And look how much it's easy. I will add 100% of clarity, whites, highlights, and a bit of exposure, and removing a bit of noise. And it's done. So the eyes are done before and after, before and after. And I think the image is amazing, but if we want to add just a bit, so a radial gradient here, on the dog to highlight, let me say, the side of the dog. So adding, inverting, so just in the middle. I want to, to affect only the dog in this way. To put the attention of people on my dog without affecting the sky. So something like that. Okay, and it's done. The image is finished. I will add a snapshot about this image after. I will call it after, create. So before and after. Before and after. I'm doing it slowly because many people asked me to do it slowly. I think it's totally amazing, totally amazing. Before and after. Maybe we can add a bit more of just a bit more of color on the eyes, uprising the temperature a bit in this way. Okay, 
done. Before and after. Before and after. It's amazing. I'm sure that many of you didn't know this technique and I hope some one of you will tell me that appreciated the video and the tutorial is very powerful, is very strong, it's very easy, it's super simple, but you need to understand what we have done. Okay, step by step, slowly. Watch it again and again and again till you reach and you are sure about yourself and how to manage it with your picture. I've just managed a dog like this just with Lightroom. So I will, usually, I will probably use it for Facebook. I will post it somewhere. I don't know because I love it so much. And I want to show you again the before and the after. From a boring picture to an amazing picture. From boring picture in backlight, very difficult with a 14 millimeters 2.8 with a full frame. So really complicated to focus the eyes to after. It's totally amazing. I love it so much. I wish you an amazing time, an amazing day, and see you the next week with me and Liv. Bye, bye, bye.